Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. Um, if you're not joining us live today, welcome to the replay. Good morning, Steve. Hey, Bobby. Hey, everybody. Um, Rico. Hey, Jennifer. Nicole. Um, so, this is another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where... I have chose not to pour myself a cup of coffee this morning because I never drink it anyways. <laughs> hey, Loretta. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Coffee with the Critters. Hey, Deb. Um, hi. Where we do these live streams every Sunday morning. Hi, Coco. Every Sunday morning here from the Animal Behavior Center in Northwest Ohio. It's going to get loud. Hang on. What? Hey, Mano. Coco, Suki. Yeah. Can you say good morning, Rico? Thank you. Yeah, so for those of you that are new, happy Sunday. Yes, remind me to tell um, Deb Jones is on here. She's going to be here doing coffee with the critters with us live next Sunday morning. If you guys don't know who she is, you should definitely Google her. Um, Deb Jones is a very well-known dog trainer, um, known across the world, um, also a psychologist, and she will be here with me next Sunday for Coffee with the Critters. So welcome, everybody. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Diane. Hi. Hang on. Um, there will be lots of coffee next Sunday. <laughs> lots of, lots of things. So for those of you that knew, are new, my... Hey, Rachel. Um, good morning, Donna. But these birds feed off of my energy. When I get excited, there's audible explosions around here. Good morning, Ray. My name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We Hi, we are an international educational center teaching people around the world about using applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement with the animal in their care. We do that through our live streams. Um, you can join us every Sunday morning at night. Hi, every morning, intermittent schedule reinforcement. Um, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I really look forward to these. So today, today, Motor mouth is going to chime in. Um, <laughs> today we have a special guest. Her name is Bellatrix, and you may be able to hear her in the background. So I, then that's not her. I've decided to wait and show you um, some of the things I do with her in the morning. Um, we're going to feed her her breakfast here in a little bit. If you're not hi, if you're not familiar with who Bellatrix is. Um, she hasn't even been here with us for a week. Bellatrix is a Eurasian Eagle Owl here for training from Ohio Nature Education. Ohio Nature Education um, <clears throat> is a center educating people on um, about the raptors. And Bellatrix is their owl. And I want to give a kudos to Mano for um, the steps she's taking and recognized in working with this owl. Um, she was having some minor complications and said she didn't want to screw it up, so she contacted me and see if I would be interested in training Bellatrix. And here she is. Let's go uncover her. Uncover her and get her brekkie ready. So, hey, Sylvia. Good morning, everybody. Yes, we've got so much going on here. Let me first just uncover Bella, Bellatrix, because I, um, I cover her on purpose. Let me show you how and why we do this. So um, this is the, the, the enclosure that's housed many animals, from 
pigs to uh, crows, now an owl. Um, we cover her like this on purpose. And I've yet to talk about this in the Bellatrix Project, but Bellatrix Project is part of our level two membership. Um, for those who are interested in uh, more intense learning of using applied behavior analysis with, with animals. So, I was gone last week in New Jersey, and at the same time, Sandy and Karen were here at the center helping me shape the behavior of all the parrots being calm while something was about to change touch in their environment. So we had to shape the behavior of calm as the sheets started going on this enclosure. And this was several days before Bellatrix arrived. So then we got them used to seeing this enclosure covered. And there's a reason I wanted this enclosure covered. Um, I've trained several owls um, due to the help of Nature's Nursery, a wildlife rehabilitation center here in Northwest Ohio, which I continue to volunteer my time for. Um, anyways, owls don't make any noise when they fly. So I was like, perfect. We can put this owl in the parrot room. If the owl is, this is not a parrot room because this houses so many different animals. Um, hi. So, because owls don't make any sound when they're quiet, I mean, when they're flying, I thought Bellatrix would make a perfect candidate for coming in here versus in the other room where we usually introduce animals, where's where we had the lemur. Um, hi, hang on, let me reinforce cuteness behind me. Thank you. So, at the same time, they were slowly putting sheets around the cage and raising it daily and lowering it and getting the, the other animals used to um, what was about, about to come in before it came in. Um, I also, Sandy helped me put these clips on all the sheets and that was to prevent, because when the owl flies, these sheets are gonna move. And I didn't want the sheets moving. I knew the sheets moving were going to scare some of the animals, or could, because we house a lot of, or we train a lot of prey and predator. Good morning, everybody. So let's go ahead and I'll show you. So we just took some bed sheets and I'll show you how I uncover her in the morning and introduce you to the awesome Bellator. Good morning. Can you guys hear her? Well, you're going to hear a lot more than that here in a couple seconds. So I'll tell you some of the things I look for in working with owls. Um, I've had several owls at my house and center for training, including Einstein. Can you guys hear me okay? Including Einstein, the um, gray phase eastern screech owl. Uh, Sydney, that was, if you guys haven't read that story on Sydney, um, that was a, that was a great story. Sydney, the great horn owl. Um, trying to think of what other owls I've had. Those two at my house. Um, I've trained Luther, the barn owl. Sam and Moon, the barred owls. And I'm sure I'm forgetting some. And I swore I'd never train another owl again. And anybody that's trained owls knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I've learned to never say never. Because I always swore I'd never have a border collie or another male umbrella cockatoo, and I've got both of those as well. Okay, so let's open up the sheet and meet Bella. tomorrow um, but we had to shape the behavior of reinforcing calm from the parrots 
as we slowly raise this sheet because you can clearly see Rico's got a full on line of sight. Um, this is, I don't recommend people um, housing predators and prey together um, unless they've had the training and they understand uh, animal behavior and usually those that are into training animals. Um, right, Souk? So Souk is right next to the owl. And let's give you a closer look. So remember me saying, always keep your animals used to change. I am doing this with Bella right now as well. We are starting, we're getting ready to incorporate more change into her environment this week. Because um, the training we're working on with Bella right now is counter conditioning um, her to the glove. Um, so she was accidentally, the glove was accidentally paired with an aversive and it took bam, that one time. Hey Jen, um, it took that one time to be paired with an aversive, a positive punisher, and it punished the future behavior of her being calm with the glove. <clears throat> For um, Bellatrix's, um, Bellatrix is an ambassador, an ambassador owl at Ohio Nature Education, um, and she's gonna be going on programs on the glove in public. So she needs to be comfortable with going on the glove. And um, so we have counter conditioned that already and she is on the glove consistently. And that glove has, is now a conditioned reinforcer for she knows she's getting fed when the glove goes on. All right, um, you can see that in, we do those daily live streams in level two. And those have seen me struggle this week and try to figure out um, the best approach. And we've effectively counter conditioned her to the glove and she is on. And our next immediate step is going to be getting her to fly to the glove. Um, I am going to work on, I'm going to take you in there here in a second. We're going to work on several things. We're going to work on scale training. I need to bring her out. I'm going to be bringing her out, taking her into this room, putting her on a bow perch, making sure she stays comfortable going in and out of a crate, getting her on a scale. That's a lot to do within the next um, three weeks. I'm going to do as much as I can. But what my main goal was to get her back on the glove, and she's on. Yeah! So, let me tell you a couple of things about your Asian Eagle Owls. <clears throat> so see that head movement she's doing? Owls can't move. Now, I'm not an owl expert. Um, I just train a lot of them because I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe we'll go out and do a little work with Willie. I don't know if you guys can see her. She is right there. She is right there on her station. And we trained her to go to her station for several different reasons. Because she's here for training from Nature's Nursery. Anyways, let me get you a better view of Bella. Maybe we go in there real quick as I talk about a couple of things. So, owls cannot move their eyes in their head, so that's why they turn their head a lot, because they don't have the ability to do this. Or that. Well, yeah, they can do that. Anyways, um, so that's why you'll see them move their head. Um, so she's, she's looking for information and she's patiently waiting for me to go in and feed her her breakfast, which we will do. Let me take you in first and show you a couple things. Hang on. Let me turn this around. We're going to go in. I'm going to show you some things with her. She is beautiful. She is an amazing creature. 
Now I'm not going to stand in here for too long without feeding her because that's what she's looking for. Um, one thing I do not want to see an owl do is there's a difference between what she's doing and what a scared owl does. So that's, she's wanting to be fed. Um, and the only time I stand here in front of her is when I'm getting ready to feed her. So maybe we go ahead and feed her really quick. Um, you can tell the difference between a great horned owl and a Eurasian eagle owl. So she's checking out something outside. It must be a squirrel on the fence. Visual enrichment. Um, Eurasian eagle owls have those big, beautiful orange eyes, whereas a great horned owl has yellow eyes. Let me go ahead. I want to tell you guys a couple more things about eagle owls, but I want to get her fed first. I'm not going to sit here because, like I said, if that animal can see, hear, or feel you, you're training it, whether you realize it or not. And so me just standing in front of her, um, um, I don't want to miscommunicate some information. I'm going to grab her food real quick. Hang on. days of training, Bella, Trix, and I have developed a very strong working relationship. She makes major eye contact with me. Hang on, I'm going to go grab her breakfast. is I am weighing her food. We do not deprive animals of food to create motivation. We do not drop, we do no, we manipulate the food. Um, not drop weight to create motivation. What we do is identify the animal's positive reinforcers and we deliver them for behaviors we want to see maintain or increase. Hey, Sean, and I will manipulate certain types of food. Um, I have been leaving her food behind at night, but it's parts of food that the favored parts of the food always come from me. That's why I always say, hi, be your animals, be the deliverer of awesomeness. And now I'm just gonna go in and feed. I'm not gonna get her on the glove like I have been doing. So, you're gonna watch her eat. Level two know exactly what I'm trying. Rocky, that is so pretty. Tickle wickle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and feed her one real quick. take you back over there here in a second. I'm going to feed her again. Um, so I document how much food she's eating and it's increasing daily rather quickly. Um, so anyways, I'll go back in there in a second. I just want to talk to you guys about a couple of things. Um, so that's why I say 
a lot of times in my live streams, I won't stand next to the cage. Um, and if I do, it's by accident. Um, when I am training an animal, I will not stand outside the cage and turn around and talk to somebody because that animal is sitting there still looking for information. Um, and like I said, if that animal can see, hear, smell, or feel you, you are training it, whether you realize it or not. Willie was just out there flapping her wings. The key question is, what are you training? So that's why I walked away from her. She's no longer staring at me because I don't want to communicate to her. Um, I don't want to communicate or miscommunicate to her. So a lot of times there is so much training that is happening in this room. I have never been so busy <laughs> as I have been recently and I love it. I'm um, training about 12 hours a day this week. That's right, Rocky. So I'm just keeping an eye on Rico behind me. What do you think, Pipsqueak? What do you think, Pipsqueak? Um, so some of, I mean, there's a lot of, she looks like she's gonna fly. There's a lot of um, behavior happening around here. What do you think, Rock? Because some of the things that I was seeing happening um, is when I would go into that enclosure, when I go behind the sheet, um, some of the parrots were watching me and would start screaming. So that's why when I'm in there working with Bella, you'll hear me talking to the parrots. All I'm doing is trying to reinforce calm, reinforce calm while I'm in there um, with a very large predator. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons I tell you guys, hey Bruce, keep your animals used to change. This environment, and we need to do that here all the time, due to the best interests of um, all the animals here. Um, you keep them used to change, you reinforce change at their pace, and it creates a much less stressful environment for the animal. I'll go back in and feed Bella in a minute. Hi, Coco. Um, so a couple of things, Bella's really got her eyes on something. Um, owls, a lot of times I have, hey Puff, a lot of times I have people ask me, um, are owls really that smart? And I will say this, owls, animals are as smart as they have to be. They're as smart as they're evolved to be. And I'll tell you, hi. I'll tell you one of the things um, about the owls. They're very good at what they do. They um, hunt very well. Do you keep feeding times the same or change that too? Um, like, here's my log of what I've been training all week. Very detailed information. Um, this is primarily for me for now uh, because I need to see what is going on day to day, hour by hour, um, how much food is eating. So to answer your question, Sylvia, I have not trained or I have not fed at specific times. Um, each day the times have varied, like on 821. Um, I fed her a couple of times a day, but large amounts uh, because she was just getting settled in. She had to get used to the sounds of the birds, um, seeing a turkey vulture flying around. Um, she was watching a roller pigeon in the training room. Um, we just started introducing some of the mammals. Um, by the time Bellatrix gets back to Ohio Nature Education, I told Mano this. Mano, are you still on here? I told Mano this your owl is going to be bomb proof. <laughs> so she is, I mean, look at her now. She is so, <laughs> is, was that funny? Rocky, did I say something? Look, she's got, she's sitting on the perch closest to us. Close, there she, there's Mano. Um, and Mano, feel free to chime in. There's Mano from Ohio Nature Education. Feel free to chime in with any information. Peekaboo! So I had to get uh, Bella used to the sound. I'm pretty sure I'm 
accurate in saying that Bella has probably never been housed with anything that says peekaboo right next to it. Um, so look at this calm behavior. I love seeing this with all the sounds happening around here. So one of the other things when I'm getting ready to train her, um, and I'm going to be talking about this in level two because I was thinking about this in the shower this morning. Um, I need to start mixing in some other training now. So a lot of her training has just been getting used to the sounds, training these animals to get used to. Um, there's a two foot predator sitting over there um, and being calm with it. So one of the next things I'm getting ready to do, I need to start mixing in more training so she doesn't get used to uh, just glove training. Um, so I was working with her last night <clears throat> with her Jesses. Um, I'm starting to touch her feet, getting her ready for <clears throat> talon trims. Um, and at Nature's Nursery, I've trained uh, Kamikaze, the red-tailed hawk, to accept a voluntary nail trim. This is Kamikaze that I used to nickname Spinal Tap. Um, because <laughs> if you turned your back on her, boom, she was on the back of your head. Um, that never happened, but I tested it once through a fence, and I was like, am I seeing what I'm seeing? And I turned my head on the other side of the fence, and boom, she was on it. So um, I have some of those videos, and if you guys remind me, if somebody sends me a message, I will show you a very cool video of me training. Of me training and working with Kamikaze to accept a voluntary talon trim. Pretty cool. And so that's what I'm getting ready to work on with Bellatrix. Um, so let's see. Storm says, Will she be allowed to use the indoor flight area at some point as exercise, perhaps? Mano and I were talking about doing some things with her out in the center. It depends on how far I can get with her, how fast peekaboo. It is so important. It is so important right now for me to start mixing in other training with her so she doesn't get used to just one thing. Yeah, I just reinforced that. That's okay. Um, so Mano and I did talk about possibly using a creance with her out there. Um, let's see, I need to get her flying to the glove. She's only, I've only been training her for five days um, and she's just blowing my mind. Um, so probably one of the very next things I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna start mixing in um, accepting tension on a Jess. Um, I'm gonna start training her for a talon trim and here we have her scale that I just um, made this week. I'm going to start getting her on the scale. And I'm going to tell you, she's a heavy bird. It only takes a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds for her to be on my glove before my hands start shaking. So, and when I'm training a heavy bird, I have this. I have this eagle stick that was made for me years ago from the awesome Katie Stam. Um, this, is a, this is such a cool gift. She's got my name engraved on it. There is Sydney, the great horned owl that I trained. Um, there is Rico. There is my name. Here is, oh I forgot. Coco's behind me and he's afraid of sticks. There is Einstein. Can you see? That's one of the owls I train. There's Murray. The higher I raise this, the more he's probably gonna freak out. There's Rocky. And let me turn this around because this is super cool. Because down here, she has eggs in a nest um, resembling where it all started. So this eagle stick, I have yet to really use it, <clears throat> but I can, but it's meant to, 
when you have a heavy bird like that one or that one out there on the glove and you're presenting you hold the stick like this you hold the bird on the glove and you hold the stick underneath you just to give you a way to rest your arm um, so let me tell you some more about Bellatrix and let's go back in and feed her again So, um, they're Eurasian eagle owl. Uh, they're from Europe. They can be found in Europe, Asia, and Russia. And they're one of the largest species of owl. Let's go back over there. Mm -hmm. They're one of the largest species of owls. Um, the females with raptors. Um, raptors are hunting birds, usually hunting, <laughs> hunting meat-eating birds. Um, and owls are pretty intense predators, and they're pretty damn good at it. They're pretty good at catching their food. Their prey can't hear them coming. Um, and if you've ever seen the skull of an owl, it's pretty cool. I remember with Moon, the barred owl, um, she let me touch her head and I just got her used to letting me do all kinds of things with her for veterinary exams. But one time I pulled the feathers back on her head and I was like, ooh, look at that. That's very strange looking. I feel like I'm looking at an alien. Their skulls, their skull comes out to formations that go like this and this underneath those feathers and if you do that do that right now put your cup your hands behind your ears and see how it amplifies the sound but then take one and tip it up and take one and tip it down and that is a lot how an owl hunts by what it hears um, you see like if I move anything in her cage she's quickly looking at it and then she goes like this and Mana was saying that is so they can hear and like I said, they can't go like this with their eyeballs, so they have to, they move their head so they can move their eyes and see. Um, so, Mano, feel free to chime in on any of this. Do that and see how it amplifies the sound. But back to, um, and thank you everybody for sharing this live stream. Your female raptors are usually larger than the males. Uh, I know there's different reasons and assumptions as to why. Um, it, the ones that I have heard is because it's usually the females protecting the nest um, and sitting on the nest. So as far as the Eurasian eagle owl, she is big. Let me tell you, she's a lot bigger than what she looks. This, um, even the volunteers have said, wow, she looks so small in the pictures. But you come in here, my husband came in here the other day and he's like, holy cow, is that a large bird? Wait till you see her spread her wings. She is a lot bigger. Um, she's probably a little, feet, a little over two feet tall right now. And take a look at those talons. We'll go in there. Remind me when I go in there and feed her again. I'm going to give you an up close shot of her talons. Her talons are going on about two inches long. Some species can catch their prey by sound alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, take a look at um, Google videos of the snowy owl. They can hear the mice running. They can hear the mice running underneath the snow and can capture that mouse without even seeing it. Like I said, these are. Pretty intense hunters. I would say the owls are one of the most intense hunters, that's right, Rocky, of many animals. Um, they do, they have a job and they do it very well. The females, um, like I said, female raptors usually get larger than the males. So watch this, watch her turn her head. Hi, what do you think? So see, she sees herself, and Mano told me, she sees herself in the camera. So she told me to do this, and I do go in sometimes. So see how she's moving her head? Yep. 
If I was a mouse, I'd be very afraid. Very afraid. Yeah. Um, or a bird. Um, well, a wild bird. Anyways, um, the females can grow to almost three feet tall. So she, Mano, how big do you think she is? I know it's been a week since you've seen her. She, I'd say she's a little over, when she stands up straight, when she perches straight, she's a little over two feet tall. Uh, barn owls, gray owls, well, let me see what you said. Barn owls, gray owls have awesome sense of hearing. Um, so the females can get almost three feet tall, and Bellatrix is a female, with a wingspan up to six feet two inches. I have seen Bella spread her wings and it's just huge huge and owls are nocturnal so i get a lot of people asking let's go in there i get what are you thinking rock i get a lot of people asking how do you train a nocturnal animal do you go out and train all night no i don't i don't i go in and sleep at night right you ready to rock and roll okay let me grab some food except for this time i'm gonna cut it up in little bits so give me a second. Fish. If I go in with her, I want it to be. I'm still communicating. So let me see if I can do this. Taking the camera in with me. Hang on. What are you? What am I feeding her? I'm feeding her mice right now. So what I want to show you, oops, what did I do? My hand, sorry. I gotta hold my camera funny. Take a look at those talons. I'm gonna feed her real quick. So when I'm feeding an animal, I am reading body language. I'm watching how her, the shape of her feathers around her eyes change. Okay, you see that body language change? I need to make sure I understand that so I can understand different ways she's communicating. So I want to get a closer look at her talons, but I don't want to miscommunicate what I'm doing with my hands by getting close. Look, a lot of times you can tell what a bird eats by the shape, the length of their legs, the shape of their beak. That's right, Rocky! So here I'm going to go feed her again. Nice job, Rico. So one thing, what she's doing with her mouth right now, she wants food, okay? When I'm training an owl, what I do not want to see, they have the third eyelid and uh, called the nictitating membrane. I do not want to see that. And I do not want to hear, they will clack their beak, they snap it really loud. 
that means the bird is afraid. So, see, I'm still watching her body language, but we're going to start trimming those talons. So let me see if I can do, let me see if she'll do this for me. So this is one of the things, before I could get, I was in New Jersey last week, I could not get um, Bella here. So Mano and I worked together via watching videos. Uh, she was shooting videos and I was suggesting different things she do. So one of them was to call her down the perch. I don't know if she'll do it now because I haven't done it in a while. But I did that on purpose. Call her down the perch because it gets her moving towards her food. Here she comes. But she's stepping on her jesses. So um, I need to start. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm miscommunicating something if I move in right now. Um, I know I do, Daphne. This is where I need my GoPro. Right? Here we go. Let's do that. One more piece of food. I, I had a GoPro. I gave it away. Okay, one more piece of food for my feeder. Yes, good point. Um, I got a lot of questions coming up. So, um, the perch. Yes, we have perches in here based on the size of her feet. So that's what, and this is uh, like a daisy mat material that we zip tie. Angie did this. Angie uh, volunteers here. She has a history of volunteer at Nature's Nursery, a wildlife rehab center too. Um, owls and a lot of birds can get something called bumblefoot. Uh, you definitely do not want that. Um, once your owl gets bumblefoot or your bird gets bumblefoot, it's hard to um, change and it can kill them. And it's often, um, it can be a sign of too heavy of a bird. Your bird is overweight. That is why we weigh our birds here a lot. And the same old perches, um, not causing the animal to be able to spread their foot, that can um, cause bumblefoot. And so that's why we wrap the two by four. Nicole said um, we've made it the size of her perch foot for easy perching. Yep. So I'll explain what the jesses are, but I'm trying to get nice job, Bella. Um, see the size of those feet? Yeah. Um, so we make the perches we make the perches um, big enough to accommodate their feet so they can perch easily. Here's her other perch. This was this was in somebody's cage, I can't remember. I think this, I can't remember whose cage that used to be in. But anyways, her favorite place to perch is right here because it, it I don't know why, because I can't get it in her head and assume. Um, it's big. Um, her feet are almost as big as my hand, not quite, um, but I like perches like this because it provides a variety. It provides a variety and it constantly keeps their, their feet stretching and moving to different sizes. Um, yeah. So she's looking at me for more food. Yeah, so give me a second to get out of here because I want to talk to you guys a little bit more. I don't want to stand in here if, I find, if I'm not training her. The only time I go in, and I do go in to feed, um, I also go in, let me get this glove off my hand. Hang on, give me two seconds. 
sorry, I go in to feed and I go in to clean. Um, so I'm constantly training her. If she's watching me walk around and move around in here, um, I need her to stay perched and stay calm while I'm in cleaning her enclosure. Currently, I am the only one going in her enclosure. Um, I'm talking to, I'm gonna talk, shoot Mano an email this week, and I want to start introducing new people because she is not my owl. And her future role is, in her current role, is she's an ambassador. Um, she, uh, Mano will be taking her out on education programs and teaching people about um, raptors, respecting the wild, their roles in our ecosystem. Um, so, I was like, where was I going with that? Um, sh I cannot have Bellatrix um, developing a strong bond with me. She's not staying with me. She's going to go be going back to Mano. So I am going to set Bellatrix and Mano up for success. We're going to start um, introducing new people to Bellatrix this week because uh, Sandy even said to me the other day, oh, it is so obvious she recognizes you. And um, I didn't really notice that. Sandy did. She said um, she makes different vocalizations when different people come in, but then when I walk in the room, her body language and her focus completely changes and she's really focused on me. That's great because that means I have paired myself as the deliverer of awesomeness, but for her future, she needs to, um, I don't know if Mano's gonna be the only one handling her, but if there's different people gonna be going in her enclosure to clean, she needs to be calm for that. Um, holds true with your parrot too, several size and texture perches, even, yeah, holds true with many animals. Um, many animals. So, yeah, I swore I'd never train another owl again because I don't want to work that hard <laughs> anymore. I don't have to. Um, but Bellatrix has been just a real joy to work with. And even like I said this week, I mean, I wasn't sure last week. I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this again? Um, but I'm telling you what, she has been a true joy to work with. I've got several more weeks to work with her. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. Like, I'm, as soon as I get off, the fo off, off this live stream. So right now, she's checking out the dogs on the deck. So I'm watching body language. Watching body language. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, do you guys want to watch me work with Willie? Because Willie, you know what? I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Willie's patiently staying on her uh, station. We've got the lawn guy coming over shortly after, so I've got to go out and get uh, Willie in her perch or in her crate real quick. Um, Lots of cool things happening this week. So I want to thank Mano for letting me do the live stream on Bella. And there's certain things I'm training her. And the reason I'm not showing them is because um, I don't, there's a lot of steps that have gone into where I've, how I've gotten to the point I have. And I just don't want it to appear super duper cool and, um, that somebody goes out and tries to get an owl and try this with themselves. Um, I have a history of working with owls. I really understand a lot of their body language. Um, she's getting ready to rouse. And it looks like um, those tufts on the top of her head, can you see that one? A lot of people think those are her ears, they're not. They're just tufts, and those tufts, as she grows older, are going to get a lot bigger. So somebody had asked me what the um, leather strips are. So she's getting she's getting ready to go to sleep. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> you get that look. She's getting ready to go to sleep. She's also checking out the dogs on the deck. Um, 
she's had a little bit of brekkie. I need to feed her um, at least twice as that, as much as that. So somebody had asked me what I feed her on a daily basis, how many times I feed. It depends on um, the day. Like as soon as I get off of here, um, there has been a zoo very adamantly calling on me um, and wants to and wants to meet me and um, show me some of the animals. So I need to leave right after this and head to that zoo. But um, we'll see what happens there. Anyways, also some other things. Um, so because I'm going to be gone for several hours at this zoo, I will feed her more and then I will feed her an, uh, uh, as much that I know she's going to be comfortable. She'll probably go down and sleep for the rest, for the majority of the day. And then when I get back this afternoon, I will probably feed her two more times. But it depends. Like, um, we've got a series of workshops happening that ends tomorrow. Ooh, she's on something. See, if, if I was on the receiving end of that look, you should be very nervous. <laughs> I love working with owls because I know they're such intense hunters. So if I know I'm going to be here all day, I feed her and train her once every hour and a half so I can get that frequency and repetition. If I know I'm going to be gone all day, I will feed her twice. First thing in the morning and right before I shut down the right before I shut down the center. So she's on something again. Something's got her attention. I'm just being quiet so you guys can look at see what that looks like. Can you see those tufts? Anyway, somebody else asked me about the, the Jesses, the leather straps. She's got anklets and leather straps. What was that, Coco? Those are called... Um, Coco, Coco! Those are called anklets and Jesses. Um, we were talking about this in level two. Um, those are for when she goes out on educational programs. We don't suggest using... Um, using those as a form of restraint. We use those as a form of um, safety. And like we were talking about in level two in the Q&A yesterday, I never want to see a bird, to me, this is me, I don't want to see, yeah, just as for handling birds and programs, I don't like to see raptors bait and what a bait means. Let me show you. Well, but let me show you the glove and what those jesses do. So a lot of people like to use, I like, this is very dirty, because this is where Willie gets 100% of her food. Um, and that's why she's on her station out there, patiently waiting for me to come out. Um, but this is what you do, okay? So here's the leather glove, and it's a mess because that is where I feed Willie 100% of her food. And you see this little strut, this little thing right here? Those jesses come down, a lead goes on, the bird gets on the glove, um, the jesses hang from the back, and the lead is attached right here. So you've got your hand free. Um, you don't have to hold on to the lead. And if for some, this coo -coo -coo, this is a form of, protection and safety. If the bird was to f jump off or fly off, it's attached to your glove. Um, so you don't accidentally lose your bird. But baiting is when a, when a bird jumps from the glove. So I don't want to stand, she's looking at the glove. And this is why I say don't ever stand in front of the animal. She's looking at the glove. Um, here's Manos that I was using. Same thing. 
okay? Um, anyways, I don't like to see birds bait because that means they're uncomfortable. And when I'm working with raptors, and even when I was working with Willie, um, on getting her moving around, because Willie was a bird that I once could not touch. Um, I could not get near. Anyways, um, I always tell people, be the bird's wings, be the bird's legs. You know, read that body language and know what it looks like when they're nervous. When Willie's on my glove, I like using a leather glove. Um, can those talons go through it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's very hard to get through it. Anyways, the more important thing is if I'm standing there with my bird on the glove and I'm looking like this and I'm talking to people, if I've got my eye off of that bird, I can feel if it gets nervous through its feet. Um, and that leather um, is thinner, so it helps you feel that. Um, where do you get those gloves? Um, I bought mine, this one, and I believe Manos did too, comes from Northwoods Falconry. Yeah, I believe this is an extra large. I've got very long fingers. Um, and this is, I want to buy a new one because this one's so dirty, but this one is probably seven years old and it's very well used. Um, it's comfortable. It's like an old pair of shoes for me. Anyways, yeah, that's why I say, and some people tell me Northwoods Falconry is a good source. Yeah, um, that's why I tell people, some people ask me, aren't you afraid of her talons? And I'm like, no, because I'm not going to show her, I'm not going to teach her um, a way of using them for defense. I'm never going to do that. Just like Milo, our pig with his tusks, they say, um, aren't you going to trim those tusks? And I'm like, why would I? And they're like, well, because they can use them as a form of defense. And I was like, well, hopefully I'm never putting the pig in a position where it has to learn how to use them. Those tusks are big, they're natural, and they're beautiful, and they're great for a part of education, so I want people to see that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, around here we don't like to modify body parts um, for behavior issues. We, we don't. Um, instead, we just modify the behavior issue. Yeah, because a lot of times you modify the body part Instead of working on the behavior issue, you're going to see a behavioral shift or you're going to see that behavior issue get worse. Um, so anyways, yeah. So we've got, um, Mano, we've got some chicks here that I thought about taking in and giving her, but I just wanted to clear that with you first. Um, anyways, so yeah, we've got a lot going on here. We're in the series, we're, we're doing a series of workshops where we're, um, the Autism Model School is here for um, animal behavior and training workshops just to see um, for education. Um, I'm getting ready to head to a zoo here in a couple of minutes and uh, so stay tuned and also next week the awesome Deb Jones is coming in for a visit. We're going to hang out for a couple days. And she will be joining me on Coffee with the Critters next Sunday at 9. If you don't know who Deb Jones is, she's a very well-known, internationally well-known, award-winning author, psychologist, dog trainer, agility trainer. Um, and she also teaches for Finzy Dog Sports. Um, Go for it, okay. Anyway, so yeah, join us next week if you like the work that we do here. What are you doing, Chucklehead? What is that, Rico? If you like the work we do here and you wanna see more intense uh, training uh, daily or weekly, take a look at our membership program, yay! Um, take a look at our membership program, level one and level two. Level one is primarily for um, companion animal lovers. Level two is more for uh, people who want more intense weekly live streams, um, podcasts, um, interviews, 
there's a lots of good stuff. And then we also have the projects. And we teach people across the world um, how to interact with animals using positive reinforcement and thoroughly understanding the use of applied behavior analysis. Many people think applied behavior analysis over their head. Nope, that's what we're about. We make it go in your head. We make sure you understand it. And we do it for the best interest of the animal's future and yours as well. Because if you're both not happy, that animal's probably gonna lose its home. You are very welcome, Mano. It's great working with you. You guys take a look at Ohio Nature Education. And um, level two, get ready, because I'm getting ready to go in and get Bellatrix back on the glove. All right, guys. Um, for more information, you can find us out about us at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Have a great weekend. See you, everybody.